Okay, so today we're going to look at the architecture of the CPU. So there's going to be quite a few technical terms that we'll bring into this lesson. I'll try and take it at a sensible pace and make sure we can get through this. It may be that you watch this video through more than once uh, in order to gain a, a decent understanding of this. So firstly, there's a few anagrams there. Um, they are, the first one and the second one are one word. The third one is two words. I'll pause. I'll give you a chance to try and solve them. Okay. So specification content then. So there's quite a bit within this area. So we're going to look at understanding the fetch uh, execute cycle, sometimes referred to as the FDE cycle or the fetch decode execute cycle. The common CPU components and their function, along with the von Neumann architecture um, components and their functions as well. I'll pause on the requirements and give you a chance to have a look over those. So first of all, let's look at what the purpose of the CPU is. Now, ultimately, the CPU in itself executes all of the programs and instructions and performs all the ca calculations within our computer. So when asked at an exam question, if you were to be asked, what's the purpose of the CPU? You could answer by saying its purpose is to carry out the fetch decode execute cycle or to execute all of the instructions on the computer. Ultimately, either way is absolutely fine. In essence, the CPU is responsible for doing the thinking of our computer. It's responsible for conducting all of the other components in the computer, as well as using its individual components that it's got to do so. There are the common components of CPUs. So this is something that generally spans across any sort of manufacturer, um, as well as any sort of architecture of the CPU. So first we have the ALU, the Arithmetic and Logic Unit. And this part of the CPU is responsible for performing all the calculations and logical comparisons. So calculations being things mathematical, so plus, minus, divide times, all of those sorts of things, the arithmetic part. Then you've got the logical comparisons. So this could be your greater than, less than, and, or not. And we'll look at these in more detail in future lessons. You've also got the control unit, or CU, and this is responsible for managing other hardware. So this might be the part that tells us the, for example, secondary storage, your hard disk drive to move something into RAM. It might be telling your graphics card to do something in particular. But that's the control unit. You've got cache. Cache is cache memory. This is where your most frequently used uh, instructions will be stored. And it's a super fast type of memory that's built into the CPU. It's a very small amount of memory, but it's only just for those instructions, as I said, that are most frequently used in order to reduce the time needed to gather data from or gather data from the RAM um, in order to speed up that execution of instructions. And then registers. Now, we'll talk about registers in a bit more detail. Uh, further in this lesson, but registers are in essence just short term pieces of storage. So they're just tiny little segments of the CPU that are used to store data temporarily, and they could be for a number of different reasons. It's worth noting as well that there are different types of architectures of CPUs, but generally speaking, the most common that you're likely to come across is the von Neumann or von Neumann architecture, as is pronounced in other sort of scenarios. And this kind of follows um, some special purpose components of the CPU that are used to process uh, instructions, so to perform that fetch decode execute cycle. And we'll look at some of those in a bit more detail, how they're connected and how the fetch decode execute cycle uh, works. So in the von Neumann architecture, there are these special purpose registers. So if you remember we said about certain registers that are used to store pieces of data, well, this is where these special purpose registers come into it. So we've got the MAR, the memory address register. And this is where the address of the next instruction to be fetched from RAM is stored. And this will make a bit more sense when we look at a diagram in a future slide. But ultimately, it stores a location, it stores an address, so the memory address register. We have the MDR, the memory data register. This is where we actually store the data that has been retrieved from our memory. So the actual information that's been moved across rather than necessarily the location. We have the program counter. This keeps track of our um, cycles it's in terms of how many fetch decode execute cycles that we've uh, performed and it increases as a counter each time we perform a uh, full cycle and we have the accumulator now the accumulator stores the result and calculations from the ALU so the arithmetic logic unit performs the calculation and the answer to that gets stored in the accumulator and it's worth noting this can only store one piece of data at a time so if we were to do one plus two plus three, we'd have to break it down into one plus two, and then the answer to that plus three. Um, so it's worthwhile commenting on that. So the fetch decode execute cycle is that idea that we are taking some information, 
uh, our CPU requests information from our primary memory, our RAM, that feeds back information into our CPU, our CPU processes and uh, decodes that instruction and then carries out and executes it. Now to give you some kind of scale as to how many times these, this cycle happens per second, typical CPUs in computers nowadays could run anywhere up to sort of four gigahertz. Now when we're saying four gigahertz, we're saying that you can perform four billion of these cycles per second. Now it won't necessarily be always running at four billion cycles per second, but it's up to four billion cycles per second. This diagram here is where we'll start to knit together and things hopefully will make a bit more sense. So I've color coded it. So you've got in yellow, the fetch, in blue, decode, and in this sort of pinky purple color, execute. And I'll talk you through the process and I'll uh, feed it through with my mouse pointer so you can sort of see how it works. Now, what we've got is our program counter, which as we mentioned, keeps track of where we are in our fetch, decode, execute cycle. And this increases every time we complete the cycle. So the first thing we'll do is the program counter will pass its count into the memory address register, which will tell us what the next location in memory is that we want to look at. So the memory address register, just for argument's sake, will start off at zero and then go to one, then go to two, then go to three. And it'll just look up in the first location, second, third, fourth, fifth, and so forth. So the memory address register passes the location across what's called the address bus. Now the address bus is a physical cable where the data, this location, this address is passed into our main memory. Our main memory looks up that address, looks in, for example, location one. The data that's in location one goes along the data bus, again, a physical cable, and that data that is stored in that location then gets stored in the memory data register on the CPU. This is where the CPU has fetched an instruction. We then need to decode that instruction to make sense of it. So our instruction register, sometimes referred to as the current instruction register, will make sense of that binary data that's been received as to tell us what we're actually doing. So it will tell us, are we adding a number? Are we subtracting, dividing, multiplying, a logical comparison, greater than, less than? Any number of instructions that could, uh, could be carried out. Once that's been decoded and made sense of, our arithmetic and logic unit, our ALU, takes over. This is the part that actually then carries out the calculation itself. Once the calculation uh, or logical comparison has been performed, the resulting answer gets stored in the accumulator, and that accumulator could then pass it back to the data register and written back into memory. Now, if the instruction that we were carrying out or retrieving from memory, main memory was something that we had been using frequently, we wouldn't have had to do this step where we fetch it from main memory because we could have used our cache memory, as we remember being much, much faster memory. So to recap, yellow is fetch, our number is passed into our address register, we look up that address location, the data that's in that location gets passed along back into the data register. It then gets decoded to be made sense of, the calculation is performed, and that data that can then be passed back into our memory to be stored for later use. There are a few slides here just to um, explain those steps of the fetch decode execute cycle in a bit more detail. I'll pause on each one. Feel free to pause the video if you want to read them.